In addition to all the new formats and everything else, the other major change is that EDIUS now supports the latest drivers for Matrox devices. Matrox have more or less stopped making devices for video programs, but you might have one that you've used with something else like Premiere or Avid. EDIUS was supporting the Matrox MX02s and Magitos with the version 7 drivers, but never got around to supporting the version 8 drivers. The version 8 drivers were the last ones produced by Matrox and were made to be used with Windows 8, but they do work on Windows 10. Now, Edius only supported the version 7 drivers and they only worked with Windows 7, which meant that if you had a Matrox device, you couldn't use it on Windows 10. Now, like it or not, the whole world is moving towards using Windows 10 and now what Grass Valley have done have made EDIUS 9 so that it will work with the Matrox version 8 drivers. So here I am running Windows 10 using my MX02 Mini that I've had for many years and this picture is popping out through the Mini to my television. See down here I've got my little Matrox icons and if I go up into the system settings, preview device, there it is Matrox Mini. Obviously I can just pop into the settings on that and you've got all the usual stuff that you'd expect. With a Matrox device, unlike a Blackmagic, you can define what kind of connection you're using on the analog inside of the program. So I can do component or I can do composite and I swap it inside of EDIUS, whereas in Blackmagic you do it somewhere else. But more or less it's the same thing. And you can see here I've got all the options for output and everything else. The main thing is it's in there, it works with the version 8 drivers. I've captured stuff with it, I've edited with it and I've used it and it works fine. With the version 7 drivers, if you're watching through an HDMI cable, there was always a delay when you swapped between the player and the recorder before the TV caught up. That hasn't changed, that's exactly the same with the version 8 drivers. You don't get that delay if you're watching it through component or composite. Now if you've got a Matrox gizmo, you can use it with EDIUS 9. Of course you can have EDIUS 8 and EDIUS 9 on the same computer like I have here. So what happens if you go into EDIUS 8 which hasn't been updated to use the MX02 and you try and turn on the MX02 because if you did that in EDIUS 8 with the version 8 drivers it would crash. Well the good news is they thought of that and here you can see in EDIUS 8 you just don't get the option for the Matrox as a preview device. The other new stuff that's in EDIUS 9.2 is really to do with different formats and settings. So for example, go to the system settings, hardware, and you'll notice there's a new thing that says monitor control. What's this all about? Well, to be honest, it's specific to these particular monitors. And it basically lets you choose a monitor and then specify stuff to go with it. I don't have one of these monitors, so I haven't really used it. So I can't really comment on what it does. It's to get obviously better pictures on certain monitors. Most people, unless you've got these monitors, are going to ignore it. Another change is if you look at the primary color corrector, you have this option up here for choosing the source LUT. Now, if you're using a camera and it's got decent metadata inside of it, then basically you stick the primary color corrector on there and it automatically chooses the right LUT for your footage. But there are other options. So there's different options for how you might treat Canon footage and so on. Now they've added in more options in here. So we've all got options for the D-Log format on a DJI camera. You've got another color space setting for the Alexa C series and some more gamma types for Canon cameras. And you can see the list has got bigger and bigger and bigger. And of course, there's gonna be more as people invent more cameras. Well, sometimes you might find that list is tediously long, especially if it doesn't automatically select it for you. So we've got a new option and that's if you go to the system settings, and you go to this heading color space under application, you can decide which of these settings you're actually going to see in that list. So for example, I could turn off all the ARRI ones because I do not have an ARRI camera, unfortunately. Enough people watch my videos, maybe I can afford them, but I doubt it very much. Now I go into the primary color corrector, there's less options and I can see it all on screen. Basically only using a Panasonic camera, Maybe I'll just stick to only the Panasonic one and a couple of others and get rid of all the rest. It affects the source LUTs and it affects the destination LUTs. So again, if you've got this list to be too long, you can actually get rid of half a ton of those and maybe just keep it down to the ones you're using plus some ones you've imported. It's only a small change, it's quite nice. And you can also load Apple ProRes MXF clips. So this is ProRes in an MXF file as opposed to ProRes in a MOV file, which it loaded anyway. Doesn't mean it supports ProRes RAW, which is a new format which Apple have just announced. It's actually ProRes in an MXF file. So again, a small change, which is quite useful. 
The other changes we've got are all inside Mink. So let me just pop out of this for a second, fire up Mink, which is Grass Valley's file cataloging program. You can see here I've got a few things that I've logged into it already. Some clips here with little red dots, which means I logged them and then moved them so they're offline. But anyway, in Mink we have a couple of changes. First off is it can deal with HDR, which it didn't used to do before, which is nice. Edius could do it, now this can do it. The other thing is if you make up a storyboard and you pop some clips into it, obviously all the storyboarding side has remained the same, but what you do get, if you're using the right kind of processor, and I'm using a Coffee Lake i7 processor, is you get the option to export it into H.265 as well as H.264. Obviously H.265 was added into EDIUS in EDIUS 9.1, well now it's in Mink as well. That is only using the hardware, it's only using quick sync hardware, so you still can't do it in software, they haven't added that to EDIUS yet. But you do have the option here now in Mink to do what you could do in EDIUS in the last version. And this should be in the paid for version of Mink that you can get, as well as in the one that comes with EDIUS. I have to admit, I've only got the EDIUS one, so I haven't checked the paid for one, but I'm assuming it's in that as well. The other slight change is that in the display settings in Windows, you have different scaling on monitors. If you've got two or three monitors connected, you can see I've got three here. If you've got two or three monitors to connect it to a computer, you can have different scaling for different monitors. Now mine are all set to 125%, but if they were different sizes, EDIUS doesn't like that very much. Well, neither did Mink. Mink is now okay with that. EDIUS still isn't okay with that, maybe that's something that'll be coming in EDIUS in the future. But right now you can use Mink and have different scalings on different screens, which is important if one of your screens happens to be a big 4K screen, because you won't want that to be set to 100% whilst everything else is. Again, small change. The biggest change we've got in Mink is the fact that it does HDR and now you can export to H.265. Anyway, that very quickly goes through the changes that we've got in EDIUS 9.2. Presumably there'll be an EDIUS 9.3 coming along in a couple of months with some more stuff in and when that happens, I'll make up some new videos. Don't forget that you can order EDIUS through my website, www.dvctraining.co.uk and then I'll give you support and help on setting the thing up. If you order it through my website, you also get the option to buy my EDIUS tutorial at half price. Don't forget to subscribe to the Facebook page while I'll post information and news on the latest stuff that's happening in the world of digital video, not just on EDIUS, but on other programs. And of course, if you've got any questions, just email me david at dvctraining.co.uk and I'll do my best to help. Hope you found this video useful and I'll see you next time.